where we aim to inspire, strengthen, and empower. Now, now let's begin to heal. Hey y'all, I'm Toya, and I'll be investigating the business of everyday people like you and I. That's Dr. Nikisha, she'll be checking in on your heart. And this is Tam, she'll be enlightening you with fun facts you didn't even know you needed. She's just nerdy like that. Now that you met us, let's get in your business. In your business. So on today's episode, we want to kind of discuss saying what you mean and meaning what you say. <laughs> so I only have one question today. Have you ever said one thing to someone and they took it completely different in a whole different direction than what you meant? Either one of you guys can go ahead, though. <laughs> like, sure, I'll be in the best. Out of the best. Um, no, so I'm pretty sure. Um, so something I've said and another person has taken it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've met plenty of times. Um, and I think most of the time that comes from the individual not really listening mm -hmm. or listening to hear what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done it before too, so you know I'm guilty. But yeah, just clarifying, no, that's not what I meant. This is what I meant, you know. Mm -hmm. kind of helped with that, but... It can get messy. Yes. Oh, no. It can get messy. <laughs> and married, married people know that, especially. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I would have to agree. There have been times that I've said something that someone totally took took it left. It was right. like, where did you get that from? Uh -huh. That's not what I meant at all. So yeah. 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 And I think too, like um Doc was saying, if you're if you wake up in a mood or something. And then you bring yourself out into the world with that mood. And somebody says something to you, good morning. What do you mean by that? <laughs> it can be any little thing, but if you already have a mindset like in that direction, you might take it the wrong way. Anyway, so sometimes it is just like you said, uh, why would you say that when I just said this? But yeah. So how do you like get past that? Like, have you ever been in a situation where it's kind of like you're trying to explain it and they're like, yeah, I don't, I'm not getting that. Um, put the emotions to the side and really try to ask yourself, you know, what did this person's intentions are or if it's the other way around, try to help the other person see your intentions. Like, okay, if we know each other and you know that I typically don't you know okay. communicate that way or you know come off that way if it's especially if it's a negative you know assumption mm -hmm. um you know just kind of putting aside your own feelings and trying to get to just a resolution and not worrying about you know being right or wrong right. Right. but it's yes okay let's make sure we're just understanding each other so, yeah so when you say how do you get past it are you saying from the point of the person that's receiving it like being told it or the, the person, person that said, said it taking the, yeah the person that said that it, said it uh -huh. um i would just ask them you know how could you have taken it the wrong way like give me a chance to explain exactly what i meant and then if they're just like they just can't get past it then 
we'll just have to revisit mm-hmm. that another time. Oh, okay. But yeah. just know that I didn't mean it mm-hmm. that way. And um, I was going to say, too, you can probably get a mediator because yeah. uh, they just are not going to hear you yeah. anymore. Mm-hmm. Because once you heard it, one way, yes. they can't yeah. hear it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe you can get somebody yeah. to like, okay. Hold on, this is what she said. What are you hearing or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you, ladies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. children <Show them> sweet. <laughs> Hello and blessings, everyone. This is Dr. Nikisha Bell Griffin. How is your heart? So, we will continue our conversation about saying what you mean and meaning what you say. Um, and to um, piggyback off of Victoria, I want to know kind of, well, not kind of, I do want to know what you ladies think about why it is people really do say things at times that they don't mean. We're not talking about just not understanding what someone says or misunderstanding what someone says, but when someone literally is saying one thing out of their mouth, but you know they don't mean what they're mm-hmm. saying to you. Why do you think people do that? Well, I think two reasons one they just don't know how to articulate themselves well and two it circles back around to a previous episode that we discussed hurt people hurt people Mm -hmm. a lot of times unfortunately being that they don't know how to articulate themselves or effectively communicate they say hurtful things to either hurt that person or just to be mean and they know they didn't mean to say that. Mm-hmm. So, That's good. Well, um, I think sometimes you don't want to own up to your own truth. So you just make the narrative look like how you want it to look. So, yep. yeah. Right. That's what it yeah. is. Yes. And I think the bottom line is it's an intention of the heart and it's also self perception um, because. Nine times out of 10, when someone is saying something out of their mouth that they do not mean and they know they don't mean it, it's different when you say something where you really mean it at the time, but then you, for whatever, you may figure out something else or gather more information, whatever whatever it may be, you literally just change your mind. That's different. But when you are coming out your mouth saying something that you know is not true, um, the intention is, hmm, I have a fear. There's a fear there of either being judged. Mm -hmm. There's a fear of being embarrassed. There's a fear of not measuring up. So many different, you know, inner struggles and battles that we have as uh, people that cause us or cause others to just say things that sound good, Mm -hmm. you know, to make yourself look good or to not disappoint. And that's a big one. Like that's a big one. Me and my mother were just having that conversation about people pleasing and how that can tie into people pleasing because you're saying yes, yes, yes all the time. When really you want to be like, no, leave me alone. I just want to rest or I don't feel like it. But because you feel like this obligation to show up for people in a certain way, you're saying yes when you really mean no. So have you found yourself in that situation before for whatever reason? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, I definitely fall into the people pleaser category. Um, can be detrimental sometimes because you are thinking about, well, what if it was me? And so I told me, no, not even thinking about like, well, wait, I really don't feel like it, you know? So I think I'm constantly putting myself in somebody else's shoes, but not really thinking, like, well, I'm halfway alert. How am I really going to help them anyway? Let me just postpone it or say, hey, I'm really tired. You know, you think you can get somebody else or can we reschedule? No, you just tough it out. <laughs> yeah. It, it, but it's hard. It's hard to, to balance that. Yeah. Rest and, yeah, mental wellness and physical wellness. Right. How about you? Yeah, I too am a people pleaser and that's something that I wish I could I don't want to say stop Mm -hmm. but I think I've gotten better since I've I've matured Um, but yeah I've been a victim of it Mm -hmm. numerous of times and it's only in a certain like a certain relationship it's not like with a friend, like a friend relationship, it's mostly like a parental relationship or 
you know, with your parent or with your child, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes for me, I'm not going to say for me, I can't speak for everybody else. That's where it really presents itself for me. Right. I think what's interesting Mm -hmm. is sometimes like, you know, I might get the courage to say, well, I'm like dog tired. Like I really can't do it. And they usually are not even disappointed or anything. They're just like, oh, okay, well, what about, you know, they, they come up with another plan for you. So you got this thought in your head that is like, well, I don't want to let them down. And I don't want to, mm-hmm. but really it was never that right. to begin with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which yes. is what we want, you know, people mm-hmm. to do to not depend on us in that capacity, you know, not unless it's your child, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's interesting because you said um, you wanted to stop being a people pleaser. And then you kind of switch and say, well, maybe not. But it's definitely, I don't feel like it's any positives to being a people pleaser. And I you know, say that from experience. No, because I feel like at the end of the day, we're not here to please others. Like you'll never be able to please everyone or even one person. Like they may be just delight, delighted in you in one moment, but then you do one thing that just is off to them or not pleasing to them. And they're looking at you sideways. So I feel like our job is to always be accountable to our Savior, our our Maker, our Creator, to please Him and then make sure that what we're doing is pleasing in a way that it honors us Mm -hmm. and it honors others. And I feel like if you can maintain that balance, then no one will be left disappointed. Now you're going to have people that are have unrealistic expectations of you, especially if you've developed that type of relationship with them. But after over time, when you're creating those boundaries that we talked about in one of our episodes, you know, they're going to either roll with it and start seeing, you know, you being healthy and say, okay, I can understand now why she said no, or, you know, why she didn't do this, or they're going to go the other way because they're going to find somebody else to leech off of or do whatever. And I hate to say it like that, but honestly, um, some people genuinely need your help, but then some people don't know the balance between, um, seeking help and also get stepping out and trying things for themselves, you know. So you have to really be careful and protect yourself because at the end of the day what happens when you're burnt out and you're no good for yourself, you yeah. know. So that's true. Yeah. So I think um stepping back to what I said about the intentions and the perceptions, the greatest thing we can do for ourselves when as far as saying what we mean and meaning what we say is assess our own beliefs and our own feelings like why like you were saying this you don't want to disappoint people like what is it that made you feel like and i'm just saying this i'm using you as Mm -hmm. an example but i'm sure many people feel this way what is it that makes you feel like you have to please people or have to you can't disappoint anyone at the you know detriment of protecting yourself Mm -hmm. you know so going back and asking yourself those questions it's important to stop and go interrupt the no cycles so that you can be a healthier you. Um, but yeah, but I love how you also said, though, keep it real. Some people just say anything out their mouth because <laughs> they want to just look a certain way. They want to show up, you know, impressing people when, you know, really inside is a whole different dialogue going on. So, yeah, and it's a whole different reality other that, you know, underneath the surface. So, I um I appreciate your honesty and I guess for anyone who is, you know, struggling with just being authentic in their words and their actions, what advice would you give them as far as your own journey? Because you even said, Tamara, that you're getting better, you're maturing in that area. So what has helped you? Just by saying no and not second guessing it or thinking into mm, it. That's like good. that's good. Okay, I said no, but then I would have these self conversations like, girl, you know you shouldn't have said no. Oh now, look, watch how they act. Oh, now they're gonna do this. Oh, now you gotta do oh now you're gonna have to triple time next time when you say yes because you said no. Mm-hmm. So, that's so I good. had to learn no is no and, and said, don't in turn don't have those side okay. thoughts. And I said Just be no, comfortable no. with your no. Basically. Yes. Ooh, I like that. Yes. That's my new motto yeah. this year. Be comfortable with your no. You're welcome. Thank you. We like you it. We like yes. it. Yes, yes. What has helped you? I know you're still on the journey and we as we say all the time, healing is a process. And that means there are things you have to go through to get to that yes. place of healing. It's not going to just miraculously happen, which we wish it would. Yes. That's just not how it works. So 
for you? What do you feel like is helping you to push beyond, you know, where you may have been a year ago, a 10 year ago? Um, I think just being like honest to the person, like not just because I, I mean, I don't have to explain anything, but I'm a no because person like, well, I can't do it because, you know, such and such and such. So I think that that was my next step, the no because, and then I'm going to work on the just no, and it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Just yeah. yeah. Just yeah. yeah. Yes, I like that. I like that. Okay, ladies, yeah. And I think for me, um, it is. I mean, people. I feel like people know, like you said, certain people know what buttons to push and what to try. And like most of my our family, kind of know what I'm just gonna be like. Mm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and like what I'll say yes to. But like for people who don't, you know, know me very well. I am like you, though. I try to soften my no and make it sound really nice and pretty. Like, well, no, I really can't do that. Or, you know. Where? And, you know. <laughs> did you say where? Yes. Because <laughs> you're soft. You're real really soft. I'm just saying. I'm doing a hug. So, you mean to tell me we get different treatment? Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Because fair. I feel like y'all know better. Say what you mean. We don't do like, like, I feel like y'all know better. That's not fair. I mean, it's, well, I feel like when people don't know you, that goes back to that people please know. I'm sorry. I feel like when people don't know know you, you're trying, for me, I try not to come off as a butthole or as someone who's mean. And if you don't really know me, I don't know what that is. But y'all know that I'm not a butthole. And you know I'm not mean. So, so I need you to be, okay, so I will be more gentle then. Is that what you're saying? You're asking me to be more gentle with my no? I'm not saying to be more gentle with your no, but I'm just saying why we got to be put in a category. And then the other thing she's saying, be more consistent. Right, I'll be more consistent with my no across the board. If we get no's, mm-hmm. they need to get the same no. Right. Well, like the same way. Well, I feel like because you know my backdrop, like you know more about me. So when I say no, I know it's something. No, listen. Okay. Just <laughs> get your listening ears. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. I feel like because you know more about me, more of my, more of my history, just more of who I am as a person, if I say no regarding something, whatever it might be, you already know my why. So I don't have to really soften it or do anything because you know me. As opposed to a stranger or someone that doesn't know me well, they might be like, well, I'm not understanding where she's coming from. Um, and to avoid, and this is the people who even conflict or just that misconception of, oh, she is just, you know, she don't care. She's whatever. I'll soften the no a little bit. So you got to find your so just So I need also. to find my just no also. Because so, I didn't realize it was going to be a problem, you know. So you <laughs> think that we know your wives every single time? Yes. So it's no. And if you don't, I know Do you're going to ask me. No. Oh, oh you know. Okay. Maybe you're concerned or like, oh, I hope she's all right. Oh. Then. Yeah. Okay. So I will start doing better with communicating this. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you for letting me know this. I'm the little Thanks sister every day. also the nose. You know, right. sometimes the nose used to just be because right. Right. I'm the same. So. <laughs> right. But yes, we are adults and we are in different relationships. So yes, I'm gonna be more mindful of that. See, communication is amazing, y'all. Yes. So yeah, so I work on my nose uh, and keep them consistently. Just a straight no for everybody. <laughs> and, you know, yes, and if it's necessary, because sometimes it is okay to explain why. Because like you said, sometimes yeah. you just genuinely concerned. Like, I'm yeah. okay, but in other, other instances where it's not necessary, it's just going to be a flat no. So thank y'all for that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been a very eye-opening conversation. Mm-hmm. I thank y'all for joining in. And remember to guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. Okay, guys, come on and get nice and cozy in the nerd's corner. So, I don't even know if I should say this because I wrote the title of the episode backwards. I wrote, mean what you say and say what you mean. Okay. So, when you did your segment, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Say what you mean to me, what you said. Yeah. Yeah. But I, mean, I guess it, it can be the same. Yeah. 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 Well, I wanted to, fun fact, uh, I'm, I'm going to put my fun fact in there early in my segment. The originator of that quote was oh. George Patton. Oh, okay. He was the originator of that I didn't quote. Even think say that what was you a mean. Quote. Just, just okay. Thank you mm-hmm. for clarifying. I didn't yeah. know that was a quote. Did you know that was a quote? No. Okay. Hey. Oh, well, thank you. I'm going to give you this party. I love it. I'm always doing something, you know?
So when I break down the first part of that quote, which is the way that I wrote it, me, what you say, a word comes to mind and that is impeccable. And the definition of impeccable means to be precise. Mean what you say, be precise. So words are our, are our tools of connection and sometimes it can divide us. You know, um, just like I just brought up Keisha Ware, Toya and I were like, well, when we get no's, you know, we, we don't get no explanation. But then you say you soften the blow when it's people that don't know you. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's a divide. Yes. So um, use the power of your words to direct the truth and love. Mm. And we didn't speak of it on that round, but, it, you know, think about it. You know, mm. there's power in the tongue. There's power in your words. Mm. You know, when you use your words, it, of course, try to be truthful um, and speak in love. You know, um, this isn't done overnight, but, you know, practice it and it, you know, will then eventually become a habit. Um, with your words, you plant a seed. That seed can grow into producing many things. Okay. So just be mindful when you speak, speak truth and speak with love. That second part of that quote I want to break down is say what you mean. Um, so it's easy for us to say things that we don't mean, um, which gives a misrepresentation of, of, you know, exactly what we were saying. And then it creates distrust. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, you hear people say, oh, I just told them a fib. I just told them a white lie. Mm -hmm. But it created this trust. Mm -hmm. So say what you mean. You know, there are times when we realize that um, we don't, we haven't been impeccable with our words. So how can we correct this? How can you correct when you said something that you weren't being precise with it before the other person responds with their reaction? You automatically know after you said it, you're like, oh, let me retract that. Mm -hmm. So how do you just change it, reword it, or do you just kind of say, well, what is it, what do you think to get their response and then correct it? Mm -hmm. How do you handle it? I mean, I think it depends. Um, sometimes I've had just said, especially if I'm still, because a lot of times, well, I'm not going to say a lot of times, but there are times where I'm still trying to process what I mean. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in order to make sure that I understand that I'm communicating effectively and a person is receiving the message the way I intended, I might say, well, what do you think? Or, you know, what are you understanding me? You know, and they may share, well, do you mean this or that? Or if I see that I'm just, just botching it all up, I will stop and then say, wait a minute. <laughs> and then I'll just, you know, oh, rephrase. Good. Okay. I'll rephrase. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you? I'm going to stop in the moment and try to read. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not what I meant. Let me start over. Let me delete that from your memory. Now, is that because you knew you weren't impeccable with your words or you knew that, oh my God, if I say that or if I continue to say that, it's going to create a response. So I, I'm going to say, I think because maybe it wasn't driven by love. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because when you're in an emotional state, you could yeah. just come out your mouth and say yes. things that, you know, yeah, that was not the right way to say that. Yeah. 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 So I want to talk about positive language and the benefits of it. Positive language, meaning, you know, in everyday life, we tend to express ourselves using negative language, like don't or can't, won't, or any other negative uh, statement. This negative language can affect our self-image. It can shape our outlook on life and predefines our behavior, unfortunately. So, um, there are many benefits to using positive language, like conveying an um, affirmative message um, and helping to implement positive mindsets and improving overall well-being. So when I think of positive language, the first thing that comes to mind is a customer service rep. Mm -hmm. They are trained to use positive language, not because it's the right thing to do or the appropriate thing to do is because they need the sales mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, they're trained to do that. And I don't think 
when people realize it, when you sit and think about it, you don't really realize, you know, the the positive language that they're taught or when you're talking to them at that time. Mm -hmm. um, they say a lot of positive things. Well, I can't directly answer your question, but let me find somebody mm -hmm. that can. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, thank you for holding. You know, we're, we're a little backed up and we appreciate your patience. Mm -hmm. You know, those type of things. That's positive language to mm -hmm. create a positive mindset mm -hmm. and to improve overall well-being and also to get you to spend that mighty dollar. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so some of the benefits of using positive language, it improves self-perception. Um, you know, when you're positive, you know, you you give off that perception that, you know, you you appreciate yourself and you enjoy yourself. And so mm -hmm. try to give off that 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 positive language to improve your self-perception because our language impacts our thoughts and our thoughts impacts our emotions. And a simple switch from negative to neutral language to positive, one can do tremendous change to our mood and our overall well-being. Mm -hmm. Another benefit is insp inspiration to others. You know, just by you saying positive things and being positive, that can inspire others to maybe switch their mindset and how they think and talk mm -hmm. um, just by you being positive. You ever been around someone, work with someone, or even a sibling or someone you know that's always positive? Mm -hmm. Either one of you? Oh, I do. Yeah, I had a yeah. worker that was just always very positive. seldom did you see her not smiling and being cheerful and, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it was contagious. It was annoying sometimes, but it was <laughs> contagious and not annoying because, you know, was anything wrong with it. But, you know, sometimes when you're not in that space, it's like, give me a minute already. Almost like when you wake up in the morning and somebody yeah. just wants to start. Well, I'm a morning person. So oh, okay. So, you know, but yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But, it, but it did. It did kind of just spread. And I noticed that because of her positive energy and language, um, a lot of people were attracted to her. You okay. know, which why wouldn't you be unless you're, you know, you have issues. But, you know, she was just very, very positive. And, yeah. yeah. I just That's look at nice to say. a person that's that way. It's like, it's got to be exhausting. Mm -hmm. It has to be exhausting to be so positive all the time because I don't care who you are. If you're human, you're going to have that one moment that you just want to be negative. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God, I can't. Mm -hmm. I just can't. You know, but for to have someone that's positive and smiley all the time is like I feel like I'm that person. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I've, I've seen you. I do have your moment. Think it is, yeah, I do have my moment, but it's not on that kind of level. I guess like it's just more like I don't. I want it to be a positive like environment around me, so it rubs off on people. It does. Like um, I'll, like my work group. I'll just say. If something is going south, like somebody being negative or being rude or something like that, I get looked at and they're like, okay, Miss Positive, <laughs> how you gonna spend this money? And I will find something like that. Like, well, no, if, you know, you don't know what kind of day the person was having. And if, you know, what if that was you and all they needed was a smile and it would have turned everything around? Cause I'm like the joke, I guess, of the, the store kind of. Somebody can walk up with smoke coming out of their ears. And they will leave, we'll be hugging, and they'll be leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? I mean, well, she wants to be a professional hugger. Yes. 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 I mean, to, it takes just as much energy to be negative. I I agree. Not more, I think I agree. More. Because to yeah. me, and I'll speak from personal experience, when I get into a space, it's harder to come out of it yeah. if I don't nip it in the bud yeah. immediately. So to be a person who can just keep yourself at that level where you're just peaceful and balanced and positive, I think you are probably energizing yourself, if nothing else, because that negativity sucks the life out of you. It does. You know? Yeah, so, it does. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Uh, another benefit is the improvement for those who are parents, the improvement of child-parent relationships. Mm -hmm. um, by using positive language, you are modeling positive behavior to your children or your child. Um, being consistently criticized with instructions like, stop doing that, um, you can't do this, this is not how it's done, et cetera, it leaves a child to feel bad mm -hmm. and defensive and they get frustrated and confused. 
Um, positive language, though, on the other hand, encourage children to take responsibility for their actions, um, make appropriate choices on, on their own, and boost their self-esteem. So the two of you being parents, have you ever had a moment where, and I'm pretty sure you have, because everyone that ha is a parent or has been a parent has had a moment where they had to correct their child or, you know, just, I don't want to say it's not reprimand. That's not what the word I'm looking for, but had to, oh, I don't even want to say ridicule. What's the word I'm looking for? Correct. Well, Maybe correct. Right. Yeah. And have there always been times that you've used positive language or does it, it, it depends on the circumstance of the situation that the child did or... Mm -hmm. I mean, I think any parent, if you're going to be honest, it definitely has been situations where it was like, uh, I can't find anybody else. <laughs> I can't find one positive word to say right now to this child. So, yeah, so I'm going to say one or two words, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to go ahead and leave and okay. exit and then come back. Okay, and well, at least you do this. that instead yes. of piling it on right. and really just right. blowing off, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's good that you just know that you need to say those two yes, yes, exactly. What about you, Tori? Um, so I think I that they get more upset because I'm being so positive. Like they want mm -hmm. me to be like, I don't know, what is the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I'm losing words now. They like if they're upset, they want me to be upset. Mm -hmm. Or if something is not going how they want it, they want me to be like mad because they're mm -hmm. mad. And I'm more like, um, but if you just, or if you try this or, you know, so I think it's, it's like the other way around. They, they get upset because I'm too positive sometimes. You know what? Just by you saying that, now that I think of your temperament, you remind me of Rose from the Golden Girls. Like, <laughs> her temperament, oh, like, <laughs> she's too sweet for you to get angry at. Uh -huh. And you can't, you know, yell at her. But then she'll say something and you're like, huh? Right. That's the <laughs> dumbest thing I've heard. <laughs> but you can't right out say it because yeah. you know it's going to hurt her feelings. Yeah. And then, you know, she's not what you say. No, 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 not what you say. But I'm just, you know, it's like that. I, it just, when you were talking, it just clicked in my head that it rose. Yeah, right. But that's that's a good I identify with Rose. You do? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so let me just give some tips. I'm gonna wrap up my segment by giving some tips on how to implement positive communication. Um, so reword phrases that have negative words like can't, won't, don't, stop, shouldn't. Um when communicating that something can't be done instead of apologizing, offer an alternative. Like, for an example, like you said earlier with your nose, um, somebody asks you, hey, we're having this. Do you think you can make it? Instead of saying, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I can't make it. Mm -hmm. No, I can't make it. And in the back of your mind thinking, well, they know me, mm -hmm. so they should understand my nose. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> no, Come that's, that's, that's not <laughs> what we're going to do. Okay. Right? Um, keep an attitude of gratitude and notice the small things, even in unpleasant situations. And that kind of lends to what you were just saying um, about the kids kind of being upset because you're not getting mm -hmm. upset about it. And then you offer mm -hmm. an alternative. Um, use kind of words. Um, they serve as a tension breaker. Mm -hmm. um, in the same way, saying compliments, um, expressing gratitude or asking someone what you can do to make the situation better. So we can all get along because that's the point. And my last one is um, keep your body language positive. Yeah. You know, if you're talking to someone and you got your hands and you're doing all that, that that right there, I'm going to get defensive. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm going to get, you know, defensive. Or if you say something to someone and they, uh -huh. you know, that right there is like, okay, well, wait a minute. Uh -huh. <laughs> you didn't take. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't want to hear what I just mm -hmm. said, or you're not, or I'm just speaking hot air. So mm -hmm. be mindful of your body language. Mm -hmm. um, but those are some tips that hopefully you can implement into positive communication that will help you mean what you say and say what you mean.
And thank you for that, because I, you know, wrapping it up or allowing you to wrap it up, um, I do want to say um, it's important because when you're talking about being defensive, some people don't say what they mean or mean what they say or vice versa, mean what they say and say what they mean because they know immediately, depending on the person they're interacting with, they're going to get defense. So, so it's like, well, how do I say this in a way that allows this person to hear me without them just automatically getting defensive and making it about them instead of just what it is I'm saying or feeling or whatever, what have you. So I love that you're giving tips for using positive words and, you know, by watching your body language and that type of thing, because I'm sure that'll help. There you go. Yeah. So thank you. Well, you're welcome. Thanks, Whitley. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Heal With Us. And remember, healing is a process, so take it one day at a time. And make sure that you're you're contacting us and reaching out to us. And also check us out on all social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, we're everywhere. So you have no excuse to say that you can't find us. Heal with us three. Our emails, heal with us three at gmail.com. So reach out to us. Say hi. Heal with us. Heal with us. in your business.